There was nothing but chaos on the Confederate flank as General Joe Johnston arrived with his men from the Shenandoah Valley. Mobs of men were streaming toward the rear in an ever-growing tide. Mercifully for the Confederates, the Federals did not pursue. General McDowell, thinking that the battle was won, spent hours organizing his line. Given the gift of time, the Confederates patched together a defense. General Thomas Jackson placed his five regiments in line behind the crest of Henry House Hill. At the same time, Bartow, Evans, and Bee tried to gather up their weary troops. The fighting exploded again at 2 p.m. when McDowell ordered his line to advance. They were met by a vicious counterfire by rebel cannons and Jackson's men that toppled the Union gunners and raked the Federal front. The Federals broke and ran and kept running as the Southern Cavalry, under Colonel James E.B. Stewart, charged into their flank and rear. Despite their success, the Confederate left was still in danger of coming apart by an overwhelming enemy force. Riding among his men, General B. was heard to say, Look, men, there stands Jackson like a stone wall. Let us determine to die here, and we will conquer. The courageous B would die that day, and Jackson had been given a nickname that would strike fear into his Yankee foes. For the next hour, each side charged and countercharged as the smoke of tens of thousands of muskets choked the air. Through it all, McDowell had ridden along his line, committing his men piecemeal instead of delivering a furious knockout blow with his superior numbers. As the battle raged on through the long, hot afternoon, General Joseph Johnston hurried his regiments from the train station into the battle to relieve the exhausted and battered Confederate line. The 18th and 28th Virginian rushed in to strengthen Jackson's crumbling left. Also coming to Jackson's aid was Kirby Smith. Passing General Johnston's headquarters on the double quick, General Smith asked for orders. Johnston's reply was short and to the point. Take them on to the front. Go where the fire is the hottest. Smith's men rushed to Bald Hill on the Confederate left. Jubal Early soon joined them on their left, extending the line once more. At 4 p.m., they went charging through the woods and mounted an all-out assault against Oliver Howard's Yankees. About 100 yards from the stream, the enemy ranks poured a volley into our ranks, which thanks to bad marksmanship went high, doing little damage. To our rear, Lieutenant Squires had unlimbered his artillery and gave the command to fire, which command being mistaken by our men is the command to let fly a terrific volley, and this was followed by a rush with thick bayonets, forcing the enemy to retreat in confusion. David Johnson, 7th Virginia. The sudden attack and heavy artillery fire from Early's men and Jeb Stewart's guns sent the main boys running back across Young's branch. Within minutes, the entire right wing of the Federal Army began to vanish. Sensing victory, Beauregard ordered an assault by the entire Southern Army. With a rebel yell that would have awakened the dead, the Gray Line stormed down Henry House Hill, scattering what was left of the Union Army. Their attacks turned what had seemed hours earlier to be a sure Federal victory into a disaster. By 4.30, the Federal Center collapsed and thousands of ill-trained troops began to head back up the Warrenton Pike and Bull Run. When under orders to retire behind the crest and from those who were left began quietly to retreat, they would not halt. They had no army on our side. Irregular masses of men without order. One captain walked by my horse for some time with tears in his eyes because he no longer had any men to command. Some officers and surgeons pointed to the wounded and begged, for God's sake, stop, don't leave us. But nothing could influence our host now except the cries as the enemy is upon us, we shall be taken. Colonel Oliver O. Howard, Heinzelman's division. Streams of beaten men discarded their gear and made for the safety of Washington. At first, the Confederates pursued their fleeing foe. Early's men were soon on the heels of Howard's vanquished regiments. Stewart's cavalry charged after the main body and Longstreet was closing the escape route through Centerville. But then, Beauregard lost his nerve. Believing that fresh Union troops were in his rear, he ordered a halt to all pursuit. Unharried, 
the Federals slogged back down the roads to Washington, as did the terrified civilians caught up in the rout. The scene in Washington on July 22nd was grim. As the beaten men reached the city, Walt Whitman wrote, The men were baffled, humiliated, and panic-struck, as well as worn, hungry, haggard, blistered in the feet, where the vaunts and the proud boast from which you went forth, where the banners and your bands of music. Walt Whitman, Brooklyn Standard. For the Federals, the clash on the banks of Bull Run was a demoralizing defeat. The fighting had been extraordinarily vicious considering the soldiers' experience. Union casualties included 470 dead and 1,071 wounded or missing. The Confederate losses were also heavy. 387 dead, 1,793 wounded and 13 missing. Almost one-fourth of all rebel casualties were from Jackson's regiments. Inevitably, the defeat cost McDowell his command. His plan of attack had been excellent. Bull Run, wrote William Tecumseh Sherman, was one of the best planned battles of the war, but its execution, particularly the poor planning that led to slow, time-wasting marches and McDowell's failure to press his advantage during the long noon delay, doomed the Union cause. On July 25th, General-in-Chief Winfield Scott tapped George McClellan, the man who saved Western Virginia, to take over the downcast Union Army and try to reorganize and reinvigorate it. The battle's size and ferocity meant that there would be more blood spilled in a long and costly struggle. As soldiers on both sides rededicated themselves to their cause, one northern soldier pledged, I shall see this thing played out or die in the attempt. By the tens of thousands, they did. 